Hello, hello. Come to show you a little project um, today. Uh, I have made this for um, a friend of mine who I'm sending this to in some happy mail. I haven't quite finished the closure yet, but I thought I would show you how I made it. And basically what I've made is a, a, is a faux envelope um, storage box or presentation box, I think. Yeah, faux envelope presentation box thingy. Um, and basically what it does is it folds down and this is obviously kind of protecting what's inside. And then it folds out and there are pockets on either side and I've stuffed it full of um, little bits and pieces. Um, now, this one was kind of made as I went along. Um, but what I've done is I've done some measurements and um, kind of um, sorted it out so it's easier to make and kind of replicate um, what I made. Um, so I'm just going to give you the measurements first of all. You need the first piece, I mean this all comes out of a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. Um, the first sheet needs to be an <laughs> five inches wide by ten and a half inches long and you need your pattern upright so it's five inches wide and ten and a half inches long. The reason I've done this in inches is because my scoreboard, although it has centimetres on it, it's pants because the score lines, they line up, they're inches, they're in inches, they're not in centimetres so it, it's, it was a lot easier to do this in inches. Um, and that's coming from me. Okay, so five inches wide, ten and a half inches long. You then need two pieces. Don't worry about the scores, score lines for a minute. You need two pieces that are three and a half inches high by five and a quarter inches wide. And again, this time you need your pattern. Um, you need, obviously, you want to be able to have your pattern upright. Um, so they need to be three and a half high and five and a quarter wide. So I'm going to pop those aside. We'll get to the pockets in a bit. Now I'm using, let me get that paper out of the way. I am using a gorgeous sheet of the cardstock that I got from Liza. Um, Liza's Craft Store is linked on my website, which is uh, tracyfoxcreative.com. There's no www. It's just tracyfoxcreative.com, and it will be linked in the description box. So I got this awesome um, paper pack from Liza, and I'm using that to make this next envelope. So I got myself a little present, and it's not a little present. Um, so it's not going to be usable for everything. Um, but I got myself a knot pants paper cutter and it's awesome. Let me just make sure this is in frame. So what I'm going to do is just take off, take off that, um, the strip with the uh, title on it. Um, and if anyone wants to know what it is, it's called Birdsong and that's the product number. If it will focus, um, it's MT BIR 04, um, and it's Birdsong is the paper pack. So we need um, to cut our five inch wide piece, um, and I want this part to be inside, so I'm going to cut it this way round. and I haven't cut that quite straight. <laughs> That's me though, not the paper cutter. Um, by ten and a half long. Okay, so that's our first piece cut and that I'm going to have this on the inside. So this is what's going to show on the outside. So that's my first piece. And the next two pieces I need to make these five and a quarter inches wide. So I'm going to line that up five and a quarter. And they need to be three and a half. Three, three and a half inches 
high. Now, for some reason, that's still... No, nope, that's fine. Three and a half inches. Okay. So, so there we go. There's our um, ten and a half by five. And these are five and a quarter by three and a half. So I'll get these scraps out of the way. I'll just make sure. Um, yeah. So I'm going to bring in my scoreboard. Now, um, what I noticed with this, let me just find my, is for example, two centimeters is slap bang between two of the score marks. So if I wanted to do this in centimetres, I couldn't anyway, because there isn't a, a, a score line at two centimetres. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to move your paper over and kind of judge that you're lining it up correctly to get your right score line. So that is why I've just done this in inches. And I think I got this idea from um, Jennifer, Jennifer from Genevieve, and I've actually put in a little um, black pen mark. So I now need to score this and I'm going to score that one at three and a half, then I'm going to score a quarter, then I'm going to score another three and a half and then another quarter and I'm going to start um, from the bottom and that's going to be the inside so this is how I want to score. So I'm going to score at three and a half and then I'm going to score at a quarter and I'm just going to line that mark up so I can do another three and a half easily and then another quarter. So that makes this part my flap. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of make those folds. and then you can see we've got the start of our box envelope so that's that's the beginning now on our two pieces these will be the inside so um, this is going to be the left hand flap so I want to score at four and a half and then a quarter of an inch and then this one I'm going to turn it upside down and do the same again so four and a half and then a quarter and that just gives us a little tiny flap to adhere to our main box um, envelope so um, it's four and a half inches and then a quarter of an inch okay so what you can see is this is going to be the inside this is our right hand flap and that's going to line up there and this is our left hand one and that's going to line up there so these will I've, I've made them slightly shorter so they don't um, have have any trouble closing and um, they're just kind of even worked out nicely so what we need to do is we need to make our envelope flap so what I what I did was how wide was this oh, I can't remember uh, what did I do yeah it's five inches so what we need to do is put a little mark it was five inches wasn't it? of course it was um, a little mark at two and a half I can find my my pencil. I'm sorry if you can hear my son's music. <laughs> Doesn't have the best taste in music, but who am I to judge? So what I'm going to do is just line that up there, line it up with the edge and draw a line and the same the other side. It's quite a pointy flap. Use 
some scissors to cut this. Hopefully fairly straight. <coughs> Sorry. And if you want to round off the flap then you can absolutely do that, we'll do that. Um, it doesn't fit particularly well in one of the in one of the cutters. I'm not sure what it will let's have a look. I'm not sure. You kind of have to judge it if you wanted to use your line it up in the centre. That's not bad. That's not bad. So now we have our flap and our envelope. I am going to use a butterfly to hold that shut because there are butterflies on the inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick our flaps in. I'm just going to ring them. I'm just going to burnish that down a little bit. Probably should have done that before now. And the other, the other crease. And I'm going to use my shimmer glue, my pin as you can probably tell has now started to go rusty so my glue is a little bit discoloured um, but I'm just going to leave that pin for now until the glue that's left in here has gone because I have to pick up some new bottles and a new, a new large glue. Right now what you need to make sure you do is line this up inside of your creases. So you don't have any trouble folding your folding your envelope or your presentation faux envelope. So that's pretty cool. Burnish that down a little bit. I mean you could also use double-sided tape, that would work just as well. And now we're gonna stick this one down. It's a shade, you could make a smaller one and you wouldn't need to add your side side flaps um, so you could you could use make this out of a complete sheet of of 12 by 12 but you'd need to make each of these sections about three inches or three and a half inches and because you have to make allowances for your spines so put this in and just make sure my flaps will open and close. I'm just going to burnish that down. Okay, so we are almost there. It's going to go something like that. Now, on this one, um, I've made a small pocket here by cutting another piece of cardstock, which I might do with that, possibly um, later. Not maybe not now, but it's a, it's an option if you wanted to add a pocket. And I definitely need some kind of closure. It's not perfect fit. Yeah, it is. It is. It's just how I'm holding it. So if you if it's closed, it is. So there we have our little fold out presentation. And now we need our pockets. Now, um, I'm gonna use some of these pieces on the inside, but the, the pocket itself is go are going to be um, plain ivory cardstock and they will fit here like so. And they are quite deep, so you could make them shorter if you want to. But what I am going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of extra. Um, so there's two pockets with the, the coloured um, patterned cardstock. So I'm just going to grab my trimmer. Um, this is obviously a problem. The only problem with this is if you haven't got a massive space... Um, Oh, I did have a whole piece. Just bear with me one minute. Here 
Here we go. I did have a piece, I don't know where it's gone, but this will do. Okay, so um, the first one we need to cut at four and three quarter inches wide. And that needs to be two and three quarter inches high. So that's our middle pocket. Now, just using this same sheet, this now needs to be for the smaller pockets only four inches high. Have I just done that completely wrong? Yes. Oh no, 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 I haven't. Four inches wide. That's it. We talk about width, width aren't we? Not height. <laughs> but they're going to be the same height, so they're two and three quarters high. So they both need to be two and three quarters. Okay. So they are our our three pockets so the centre pocket on either side and as if by magic they have been inked so you don't have to watch me ink them I'm not necessarily going to ink the actual envelope because I don't know if it needs it so what we can do is we can kind of um, I'm not sure if I want to round these or not I did round them in this one in actual fact um, Wendy had inspired me to grab the old um, frame punch board to cut these out um, but I know not everybody has one of those so I'm not going to use it for that um, I have got a few ideas for it though um, after watching Wendy's awesome video um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to make extra little pieces for that um, just to make this a lot easier I'm going to grab my little trimmer this is a rotary one it's all right it's not too bad um, but we need them the same width, so we need one at four, covered up my little piece of paper, four and three quarters, I think. Yeah, one at four and three quarters wide. And we're going to make that maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a half deep. And that will go onto this one. And these ones need to be four inches wide. And we'll make these one and a half inches too. I mean, like I said, the first one I made, I made completely just ad lib. I just, you know, I didn't measure anything. I just cut it and kind of worked with, worked with it. <laughs> so you could absolutely do that. You do not need to be. Um, but this was just for somebody who maybe wanted to make several all the same size. Um, you know, there's measurements here, so you can you can do that. Right. Um, I'm going to use the lighter ink, which is a bit of a pain because it's very, very light. Mine is just, I definitely need a new ink pad for this one. Refilling it now just doesn't seem to, seem to cut it anymore. So I'll try and do this as quickly as I can. Make sure that because this has got some type on it so I don't really want that upside down and this one I mean you could use these for all sorts of things you could put them in journals you don't necessarily have to put the you know the spiny bit in you could you could leave that so I'm going to glue the pocket on first onto my pocket so I'm gluing the mini pocket onto the larger pocket And 
just dry for a moment while I do the side ones and then we'll come back and glue them into place into our faux envelope presentation box thingy. Okay, right, let's put that on there. It's a shame that we're covering some of this gorgeous pattern up, um, but I didn't want it on the outside because then some of it's going to be upside down and that's just as bad to me. I mean, obviously you could do this with a with a patterned paper that doesn't matter which way up it goes and the outside of this one certainly doesn't matter which is why I chose this and chose to have the pattern on the inside okay right so now we need to stick in our center and obviously if you were using if you had a certain kind of theme that you were doing you could add your ink to your patterned paper but I'm just for speed, I will ink what I can after and just leave that for now. Probably don't need that much glue to be fair, but putting it on anyway. Okay, and now we just need to make sure we've got that nicely lined up inside. That's quite difficult to see without sticking my head over it. I didn't do a very good job of that. I'm just going to trim this. So at least I know it's square at the bottom. Okay. I have so many things that I want to film, so many things that I want to do. Um, but it's just so difficult doing anything with the kid. I have to wait till she's asleep. It is like having a newborn baby. Wait till she's asleep and then I can I can do things. Even dyeing paper. She pulled the tablecloth off and all of my tea dyed paper went all over the floor. Then I put it back and then she got it from the other end and pulled it off onto the floor again which is quite funny, um, but when you've got, you know, <laughs> journals to make and, and things, she'll settle down, hopefully, fairly soon. Okay, there we go. So, we now have pockets and like I said you could add things to this if you wanted to um, I've done it purposefully because it needs a bottom and it kind of just holds it all together nicely having that flap at the front so here we go this is our little I've done that little bit high just crease that in a bit more so now um, we're going to fill it and what I've done is I have printed um, an absolute ton of my faux tea cards. Um, in actual fact I, I'm preferring these because I don't have to use my originals so it's quite nice. I haven't cut or trim, trimmed any of these, they are all just printed and cut out. I haven't trimmed properly um, but that's okay because there's time to do that later and I'm just going to pop these in here and I'm going to put a few maybe four four flowers either side um, I have a couple of butterflies I think in the center leave that one out for a second just pop a few in here I mean you could put any types of tags in here they would all work I'm just wondering whether to put a few whether to put one on each 
That one's a little bit smaller, isn't it? I think I'm going to put the blue one in the centre. So I'm going to ink this. I'm going to trim it, and I'm going to use um, I'm going to use Abby's snippet technique as well because some of the tea cards I do you know my originals they are they're well worn and well thumbed through some of them are not so much but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a few little snips out of this to give it that like kind of vintagey look and feel and then I'm going to ink it I mean when I've used original tea cards in journals before sometimes I've inked them sometimes I haven't um, it just gives it a bit more of an aged aged look which I quite like and I'm going to glue that down into that centre pocket just to give it a little bit more interest okay I like that and I have printed out some of my teeny little entomology embellishments and I'm going to pop in a few of those I mean you could make these bigger you could make them smaller you can absolutely um, you can do so much with these these little presentation boxes They just, they would make great happy mail, wouldn't they? Okay, so I've got three in there. Pop a couple in there. But you could use these to store, um, to store your little tags and bits and pieces. So you could pull them out when you need them. I think I'm going to add a couple more in that one. Maybe start with a pop back there. And maybe still got room for maybe a couple of more tags at the back. That's catching on something. There we go. Probably should have put those in first. That would have been easier, wouldn't it? Now, do I want to use the word? Not sure. I think I want a couple of smaller ones again in the front there. There we go. Do I want a word on here? I'm not sure. I mean, is everything, not everything is entomology, so I'm not going to put a word on. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, maybe just pop a tough couple more in. <laughs> Seems there's space. So that is my little my little envelope. And obviously, um, I haven't haven't got out. I was going to put on a Tim Holtz um, uh, butterfly and just use that as a little tuck. Um, what I could do is um, cut the flap and then stick that. No, because it won't look as nice without the butterfly. So that is our faux envelope presentation box. So you can store your little mini embellishments or mini tags and you could also um, send them out as happy mail. So that's that. Um, hope you found it useful. Hope you could um, follow the measurements <laughs> since they're in inches and someone somewhere will probably contact me and tell me I'd got it wrong. Um, I was also asked a question about why I use centimetres as I live in the UK and actually in the UK that's what we do use. Um, so I'm not I'm not being out of the 